Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. I'm your host, Kevin, and this is one of our co-hosts, Angus. And today, we have... What year is this? Good question. There are so many in here, I get them all confused. This one has we, rectangle headlights. <laughs> we have the rectangle headlight era Monte Carlo. It's been sitting right here for who knows how long. It hasn't been licensed since 2012, and we're going to see if we can make it run and drive. Let's get to it. If you haven't already seen any of the previous videos from this property, we're at a farm no one no longer lives on that is full of cars and stuff. We bought a camper for 500 bucks, drove it 120 miles here, and have been living out of it for the past three days. You can check that out in its separate video, along with the S10 that we pulled out of a shed to use as a vehicle to drive while we're here. We just wrapped up the square body revival. You can check that one out as well. And we spent the last six hours cleaning this 150 square foot section of this garage so that we can set up a workshop as we go. As you can see, it's a lot cleaner than it was. You couldn't actually walk through here at all. If you saw the previous videos, you'll remember. So at this point, we've got some room here. We're gonna bring the Monte Carlo back and work on it in this wonderful space. Let's make it happen. So the theme here with all these cars that we've run into, which you may have seen if you watched the last videos, if not, seriously go check them out. There's some crazy shit the further we dig into the shed, especially the earlier ones when everything's buried. Those ones are nuts. All these cars were owned by a guy who used to drive heavy trucks, semis, and he loved his accessories. So every single car on this property has as many J.C. Whitney accessories as you can order installed on them. Maybe with the exception of this one. This one's actually a little more tame. I see the CB radio, which every single car has. And then we've got bumperettes on the rear, as well as bumperettes next to those. All these cars are incredibly clean. Some of them because they're extremely low mile and not driven at all. Other ones because they've been redone and we keep finding Bondo and we clean them up. And when I say clean, I don't mean like they're clean. I mean they're solid, like the rockers. For a Monte Carlo of this vintage, this thing is incredible. Let's go ahead and pop the hood, see what we got in there, because we don't know a damn thing about this car. Can't feel anything with these gloves. These gloves that I thankfully found in a bag, brand new. Oh, well, it's a V8 with AC. Yeah, as you guys can see, you, uh, you can't see. So we're gonna see what we can do to get a little more light. There's a side door over there. Let's see if we can get that one open. What's that? By the way, Luma Z34. We'll get to this one. You'll just have to subscribe so you see when it comes out. It might be tomorrow. It might be in the spring. I don't know. But YouTube will tell you if you subscribe and turn on notifications. All right, so let's immediately judge our levels of success. Keys, check. Brake pedal, I'm gonna say no. Yeah, that's a big no on the brakes. So far, we've been really lucky. All the cars that we've worked on, we've got running, and then pumped the brakes a bunch after putting fluid in them, and they've all firmed up, tires held there, and we've been able to move them around. This might be where our luck runs out. Yeah, we're getting to cars that are not at, right by the door anymore, so. We ain't in Kansas no more. To say the least, no we're not. I'll grab a battery. Angus, do you want to pop the air cleaner off, make sure there's no poop in it? Sure thing. And we'll just do the usual. Huge. Okay. Yeah, delicious. <laughs> Okay, well, I took the air cleaner with me. Well, now it's gonna have poop in it. Well, there's a mouse nest on the other side. Oh, cool. Two barrel GM, that's good. Those cars are literally immortal. That means it'll run perfect, even without an accelerator pump. Perfect enough for what we're doing today. Oh, God, this car's so long. Welcome to Monte Carlo. Who the heck was I just talking to about? Oh, my dad. I was talking to my dad about Monte Carlos. Oh, that's gone forever. And he was just like, oh, back in my day, oh, the hood was so long. I'm like, yeah, dad. Yeah, I get it. And now I'm doing it. I'm like, God, the hood's so long. <laughs> I guess you've become your father. I'm my dad. All right, we'll put this where we won't forget it somewhere on the floor. It's gone. I mean, gone forever. Oh, yeah, the flashlight. Don't worry, it's over the sink. We have a thing with setting stuff down, and it's immediately gone for like two days. It's just that there's like 9,000 million places you could set everything. I lost the flashlight yesterday. Didn't find it. Nope. I lost my glasses this morning. <laughs> Turns out they were right where I set them. Oh, come on. Yep, they've all got the battery clamp still working. What? So far, so good. Means we can derby this car. This don't, don't hurt me. I, I was kidding. 
You need another pair of pliers? I need a extension and a half inch wrench and so with the exception of the pliers and some gasoline and batteries we've been living solely off of tools we found on the floor here and so far we've pretty much set up a whole shop like we were mentioning earlier so. it turns out you didn't need your pliers no i really didn't actually There's these were just pliers like, that were literally at floor. arm's level there's more yeah. on the floor the we're nearest set of pliers may be under your foot i was just looking at my feet and i didn't see one if not there's an empty oil can within Six inches of my body. Oh, I found the pliers. I found the oil can. I found some ice chips. <laughs> Ow. Could we have asked for a better perfect example than that? I'm sure we're gonna need a 5 8 wrench. Hey, there's a whole toolbox. That toolbox right there. Do you have a half inch socket and an extension? Mm. Let me sit down on this tailgate so I can work. Uh, there's another socket set right there, actually. Of course there is. Or is that the reflector deal? Oh, the price of comfort. We might not even have to walk all the way over there. Here's a nut splitter. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why it's that. Adjustable wrench. Seven sixteenths. Yep, so I can set. No ratchet though. Oh, that's okay. I think I might have one right here. This is a quarter inch drive. There. Oh, there's the I adapter. I have three eighths. Yeah, you got three eighths half inch in there. Mm. Yeah. Wait. Seventeen thirty seconds. Why? Perfect. You want a 3 8 15 30 seconds. What is this? The socket set. 3 8 here you go. I need a half. Why? Because it's a half inch bolt. Oh, that's reasonable. Half inch. All within three feet. But you can go ahead and break it off because we have an extractor yet. <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot of tools and stuff here, and they're all brand new because this guy would go to sales at stores and stuff and buy out the clearance racks or something. So there's tons of tools and knickknacks and JC Whitney stuff and all this stuff, but no real repair equipment, no trans fluid, no uh, hose clamps. What else have we had trouble finding? No grinders, Yeah. no good drills, or there's some drills. A thousand million bottles of oil and spark plugs, because if it ran wrong, I think he just changed the oil and put in a new spark plug and call her good. Some of them probably just did put in because there's boxes of spark plugs that are yeah. labeled one good plug, rest used. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Throw them like, away, man. Four used, two new. What? <laughs> Never threw away anything. Like today, we spent, like I said, six hours cleaning that whole spot. We only filled half of a tub with usable stuff and we made like four trips to the dumpster with like just crap and then burnt probably 400 pounds of paper. I lost the new battery. Oh, stop. Oh, right. I was falling over and I dropped it on this television. Uh, don't get too close to that, it'll give you oh, cancer. See, there's the cancer. What are you doing? License plate. There's that, there's the match to the other Oi. one. Oh, one. Registered in 97. Gates! Good job, little buddy. Which one's who? That one's red. Doesn't mean it's the positive, but it's That's red. It's actually correct. Just, you look really freaked out. Are you scared? No, I just can't breathe. Are you afraid of that magical raccoon that tried to eat us in our sleep? Oh, mate. Yeah. Oh, it's gone. Never mind. But we're, there's something trying to eat the ass of the camper right now. Bang on the back wall. Foot goes. Alright, well, let's hope it goes away. There's a raccoon. I think that's the air vent. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. The wind picked up. Hey, you're the one that said wreck. I know. Right. It, it was, was a good all, guess. We were all lie. quite asleep. I was very asleep because I didn't wake up. So, dude, you got up and helped. Oh, I did. I closed the vent. The outside, he must have cleaned them a lot or something, ironically. Although nothing else got cleaned because the outsides of these cars all look great. The insides look great. Under the engine, like the like in here, just the greasiest 350 Chevy I've ever seen. <laughs> all right. Angus, you want to do the honors? Ooh, it's very green. Oh, oh my god, it's light. for our brake lines, it's a sign! Oh no. Oh no, we've got some uh, tubing wrenches. Uh -oh. Full set. Well, hey, hang on to those, man, we haven't found any of them yet. Yep. There is life above you. What? The light. Oh, well it doesn't help me, because I can't see. Okay, I'm going to turn the key, watch for being on fire. The uh, generator you got, light. You got a left blinker. Well, let's make it not that way. Uh, the fuel gauge is going up. Okay, the fuel gauge is going to infinity. That's another theme. Okay, bye. <laughs> We're not a tank and a half. Heckin' stop, please. Coming around for lap two. 
Now we'll that see. his warm up lap is done, he will set his qualifying time lap. Fuel gauge is your pole position winner. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> the horn is operational. I, you, I checked. I think Did it's we trying. Check oil in this thing? No, we didn't check the oil. Go ahead and do that. Okay. Eh, half a quart low. Looks really gross. Needs changed. But we want to put heat into the engine before we do that. The theory there is to warm the motor up and get all the sludge to drop down to the bottom of the pan. At which point it will be able to dump out the hole that you open when you take the drain plug out. So, yeah, good stuff. All right, ready? Yep, go ahead, sir. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Since it's an HEI, it should have spark. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> God, these cars are so easy, dude. No, I think he means. Oh my God, that hat! It. I see it. I want it. Get him. Get the poop yeah. off. As is tradition, too small for Angus. <laughs> Another day. Another hat that doesn't fit me. So, using what I had without moving my feet at all, I was able to find tools to take the fuel line off and a jug to catch anything in. All right, Angus, Ready? go ahead. A little lifter noise, go ahead. You got any oil pressure gauges in I've, there? Uh, I've only got the indicator and it turns off. It only just turned back on. It's got pressure, it thinks. We've got fuel, it's a little dirty, but uh, I don't smell ethanol, so it should run, should be okay. I'm gonna hook that fuel line back up. Let's see if this thing just fires up and pulls out of the hole. All right, put the tools away. Uh, yeah, she's hooked up, see if it fills the bowls. Okay, firing. <laughs> uh, might have to tap on the needle and see. Go again. There must have been a mouse nest in it. Well, it's not anymore, is it, huh? Yeah, I just swept that too. Aw, poor Jesse. <laughs> Sorry, it's been three days. <laughs> I'm getting sassy. <laughs> <laughs> no, the hat's fit. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> uh, just wants a hat. I just want a hat. I found one yesterday. Well, it runs. Let's uh, throw Jesse. some air in these tires, see if the trans works. What he said. Yay! Well, Angus is getting the air compressor spooled up. You got her hose over here. I'm gonna see what's in the trunk. It's always an adventure, I'll tell you that much. We haven't looked in this one at all. Oh. This one's pretty lame. Just crazy hubcaps. Fits the theme. <laughs> yep, that windows. There's a whole dash for this car. One of the hubcaps to the other truck. Oh! Angus, I got something that might finally fit you. Tidy whities Heck yeah, I didn't bring any underwear. Also, Playboy air fresheners. Look at that green. Oh, wow, yeah, that's a, dude, look at this green. Oh wow, I'm jealous. I had a boss in high school, he drove one of these, same color. So this one's more solid than that. I kind of want to drive this over to him and be like, hey Doug, look what I got. Wait, you hit a bus? What? Oh, I hit a bus in high school, same color. Oh, we know what this box is. Oh. We have found a ton of these here. Monty and Monty.
There, now the air compressor is off. You guys can see, 58 Chevy. There's a Monte Carlo over there that we called the Monte Carlo model car load. We've been collecting these and putting them in that car because it already had 20 in it. Anything else in here? Oh, binoculars? Some old binoculars? Binoculars. Binoculars? They're Celsi lightweight amber coated binoculars. Hi. Oh, yep, they binog. And last but not least, a poster of something we can't show on camera. Putting that in the camper. Alright, Angus, let's see if it starts. Have accessories. He's got extra lights. All right, let's see if she. I think we have some fuel delivery issues. So much garbage stuck to the tires. Alright. <laughs> we might have to do the old sucky sucky trick to try to get that card cleaned out a little bit. Otherwise, we might have a filter on the front of the car that's bad, or I don't know if these had a fuel filter stock or not, but we could definitely check that as well. We could probably check the brakes too while we're under there. Yep. Master cylinder, for sure, maybe is just out of fluid. Yeah, I think she's probably dry. It seems the theme is the wheel cylinders let all the uh, fluid out, and it just drains the level and runs down the lines a little bit, and we just fill them back up and pump on them for 10 minutes, and it bleeds that two inches of air out of those lines. And we magically have perfect brakes every time. So far. We may so have far. just jinxed ourselves. Yeah, I probably just screwed us over. Oh, yeah. well. It's worth a shot. This one's a little more buried than the other, so I won't be upset. The amount of shit stuck to the tire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you came out and it all just stayed on the wheel. <laughs> it's still stuck. Oh, my God. It pulled itself out of those holes? Yeah. It was impressive that it got out of that. That's, that's a six foot hole right there. <laughs> yep, twice as deep. Yep. <laughs> now what? Brakes? Yeah, or... let's uh, let's look at the brakes, see if there's any fluid left, and we um, should probably look at why it's not running. Oh yeah, well, we might finally have to do some carburetor work on this trip. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> Quick, get the engine degreaser! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we popped our brake master cylinder cover off and the rear is empty and the front is darn near empty. So we're just going to go ahead and not look at any lines, ignore all that, put some brake fluid in these, see if we can build up a little bit of pressure. There's some for the front and some for the back. Woo! That's enough for the back. All right, give her a real slow pumpy. Oh, bubbly boys. Another slow boy. Ooh. They drop in the Yep, I see them oh, dropping. I got a pedal arc. Oh. Uh, it's bubbling. I guess keep slow pumping it and we'll. What, what was that? I don't know. Huh. Is that you pressing the pedal? Yeah. Because it sounds like somebody with a trouble going brrrr. Yeah, just like that. Well, it's not really bubbling anymore. Slow bubbles on the front. Yeah, I've got the I've got front brakes, but I still need to bleed off the backs. So I got a question. Following themes is the title in here. Let's check the glove box. Map. Original paperwork, like manuals and everything. That's just. Hey. Yo. 
Remember how I said we might need to check that filter? God knows where we're gonna find one. There's one in the glove box. Oh my god. We can change that. It's a it's a fuel filter. It's it's a high micron fuel filter. Um it should be inside the carb, so right yeah. where the fuel line goes in, there's this big round part in the casting. It'll sit up in here. So this is what holds it in. This is our fuel line fitting, and it sits just up in here. So we could pop that out and replace it. Likely. Here it is. Certificate of title. Title for a 76 Monte Carlo. And now we go. So we've been pumping the brakes for a while now, and the rate that Kevin's pumping the pedal, we should be seeing small geysers up and out of the returns, and it's not moving hardly anything other than these little slurries. So that is just screaming to us that we've got a bad master cylinder. We might be SOL on the brake system right off the bat. Might need to get a new master. I'm able to put my foot very slowly all the way to the floor. Ooh. All right, so our brakes are probably not gonna be with us for this trip. Rip. We'll see. Safe, firm brakes, probably not. Nah. Uh -uh. Slow down gradually, we might have that. The next thing we need to do is get this thing running better. While looking, we noticed there's two bolts missing out of the base of the carburetor. So we're like, oh, well that might be it. Well, it's actually not, because we idle perfect. But at high RPM, we don't run. That's a fuel issue where a lean condition from air would be we don't idle because we have low port velocity so it can pull sideways through that vacuum leak. This goes for a lot of things actually. If you have a vacuum leak like intake seals up top, it won't be present because it's leaking at a 90 degree and only at slow speeds does that air care about that because it's under such vacuum. But you whack the throttle open and now your air velocity through the motor becomes much faster and that little pinhole in the side of the tube that is the intake runner is now ignored because the air is just going so fast and the vacuum level is at zero in the intake that it's really marginal. It doesn't even make a difference. So that's what the opposite of what we're experiencing. If this was a vacuum leak because of those bolts, we would have all the top end when it idle. However, we have idle with no top end. So I'm thinking either fuel feed or the carburetor is dirty as hell, which looking at it looks about right. We're gonna do the old roadkill method of take a rag, rev it up, shove it on the intake, and build just stupid vacuum in that carburetor with the throttle open and pull everything out. Of course, we need a rag to do this. It can't be a shop rag because it'll get sucked in the motor. We need something cloth, yet bunch upable. Underwear. I see no better option at hand. And we know they're clean because they're new. Let's do this with used underwear. Wait, wait, what'd you say? I would never do this with used underwear. Oh, I thought you said you've done this with used underwear. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, well, out of the motor, Jesse. Yeah, Jesse. Out. Poop out. Do you even pay attention? All right. I don't see if this works. So, like I said, build RPM, throttle wide open, plug it, let it suck really hard, and then I'm going to unplug it right before it dies because we're going to use that RPM as it winds down to clear out the cylinders because they are going to be flooded. Go ahead, sir. See if she starts. I guess that could also be an issue. I don't know how I overlooked that one. Yeah, I think I know what we need to do. I think we need fresh gas. <laughs> I'm sure that wouldn't hurt this poor thing. It's like yellow coming out the exhaust. There's like a big spot of oil and crap on the I floor. Bet, so. I bet there absolutely is. It helped a little bit, I want to say, maybe. Possibly, maybe. Get all that gooey gas in there. Let's go get the gas can and throw five gallons in there and see if that does anything. So, we've got five gallons of gas in the back. We threw some Marvel mystery oil we found on the floor in there as well. 
hopefully clear up some lines or whatever might be clogged. Angus is going to top off our radiator, which was pretty low. I'm going to get this line off so we can get a jug up here and fill it with the gas coming out of the line so that we can quickly flush that line out instead of taking like, you know, 10 minutes to run the entire fuel system through the motor. So if you guys are ever having fuel issues with your carburetor where you rev it a couple times and it's fine, but then on the third or fourth rev it starts going blah, blah, and dying, that means your bowls are empty which means you're not getting enough fuel flow to the carb. There's a filter right here in many styles of carburetors that needs replaced often. Uh, if it's not your pump or your inline filter, look here. This one's not looking the best. So far it's taken a gallon and a half of coolant. Yeah, it was like half full. <laughs> I'm sure that won't be an issue. No, when's, when's that ever gave it any problems running out of coolant? Please don't leak. Okay, we got some crap here. We'll try to get this fuel to pump out into that jug down there. Go ahead, Angus. All right, firing. Okay. I'll tell you what, it's not a weak pump. It's not anything before the carburetor. We just filled a half gallon jug in that time. Wow. So, system should be well flushed. Let's get everything hooked back up, see if it runs any better. All right, let's see if this thing runs better with new fuel. It'll take a second to burn out what's left. I probably flushed most of it out when I was feeding it, but we'll still give it a minute. accelerator pump at all but I still don't think that's quiet enough to make up for that no so I think it's running rich at idle like our idle screws are out a little too far could be like a lot of too far maybe I know one way to find out let's just limit the amount of air oh. rough way to tell at idle without an O2 gauge or even a vacuum gauge is right now <coughs> this thing's a little stumbly and really stinky what I'm going to do is add fuel by subtracting air. I'm not actually adding fuel, but I'm going to make it run richer by lowering the amount of air the motor's taking in. I'm going to do that. I'm not going to touch the choke because that's going to raise our idle speed. I'm going to manually be the choke and see if it gets better or worse. It did not change at all. Nope. So... You probably cupped that thing, didn't you? Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, there. I was gonna say, that shouldn't be possible to run. And if it's running with me sealing that off entirely, that means we have a huge vacuum leak that it's breathing air from below the carb. But it is actually this, just this hole in the back that I didn't have covered, so. But generally, if you can give the engine less air and it idles better, that means you're lean at idle and you need more fuel. However, if you do that and it starts to run rough immediately, there's no like good spot in there, it's just bleh. That means you have too much fuel already and you're currently too rich, which you can't really add more air, so. Subtract fuel. Turn the needles in. Or just get a little squirt bottle and dribble a couple drips in, and if it mellows out, that means it wants more fuel. Otherwise, if it dies, again, it wants less fuel, so lean it out. Just a little quick trick to uh, figure out where you're sitting at idle if you want to go up or down or something's running rough. And For what we're doing here today, and with as bad a shape that carb's in, 
that's probably as good as we're gonna get. Yeah, we didn't bring a carb kit, and we've already tried our hand at the parts stores in this area, and it's there's none. It's a hassle to get parts. It's always four hours or more. Let's pull it out of here though and see if we have a little brakes to drive around the yard. Yeah, so we got something. We just gotta move a couple of trash cans, and we should be good to move yep. on up. Let's make it happen. Take it for a little cruise up the back 40. Again. Hello. Well, we still have no brakes and it still dies when we try and accelerate. Even just really light acceleration. <laughs> I was easing into it and it just went, ah, <coughs> dies. So we got no go. We got no, no stop. stop. That's all you want in a car, right? Yeah, I think so. That's a great boat anchor. <laughs> we need a boat anchor for this. Honestly, yeah, for this one, we're going to need some parts. Well, let's go park this one, get the parts ordered. Maybe they'll be here in time tomorrow. Maybe. And we'll go work on another one in the meantime. Onward to the mess we call our home right now. Whee! Woo! Give her! All right, so right after that drive, our pedal went to the floor and it stayed on the floor. So there's no driving this car on the road until we can get parts. And the nearest O'Reilly's in a small town 40 minutes away was like, yeah, we can maybe get you that like mid next week. So there's no fix to this car in time. Well, Angus, what do we do with cars in the winter when we can't go drive them? Hmm. I feel like we came up with a solution in the past. Yeah, I think the whole last winter and spring we had a general theme for a climactic finish. Was it? Burnout? Big smoky burnout? I yeah, think. yeah, that's right. That's what it was. Let's yeah. see if it'll do it. I think I'll go one at a time. 
So interesting fact on that tire spun every time it was spinning. You go, ah, ah, oh, we ah. felt it. It was like the blah, 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 up the speed. Well, there you have it, folks. Another big smoky burnout for a climactic finish. We will come back, maybe either put some parts on this car or put it on a trailer, bring it home, and get it ready to go on market into the hands of someone who will enjoy this 75 Monte Carlo. With that being said, we're gonna open up the doors and air this place out so the fire department doesn't get called and we all go to jail. Woo! If you guys enjoyed this, make sure you subscribe, leave a comment below, leave a like on the video, and check out all of our friends here on YouTube. Got a great bunch of guys here on the internet doing a great bunch of stuff with these old cars, inspiring you guys to do your own stuff with these old cars. We'll see you right here next week for another episode of Junkyard Digs. Peace. All right. Uh, back door? Probably. Uh. Got some air. Can't even see the ceiling. It's just rafters that disappear. <laughs> <laughs>